on the program Tuesday and Monday to some degree as well, we spoke about why you need to detoxify every single day. And this was based on the research from my particular group, the IRN, the Institute of Rehabilitative Nutrition, but also from NYU Medical School, the Environmental Working Group at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, and the Red Cross, all stating that your toxicity, your level of toxins that bioaccumulates in your body is linked to immune system illness, endocrine disruption, neurological issues, and reproductive issues. And we started to spend a lot of time on this class, a classification of problem called neurotoxicity. And we said that neurotoxicity is a response of the brain to over 100,000 chemicals in our environment, leading to a wide variety of issues related to your brain just not functioning properly, again called neurotoxicity. And we used mercury as an example because mercury is probably the single most toxic substance in our environment. And we went into detail about how mercury impacts your brain and what you can do about it, basically utilizing different detoxification procedures like glutathione, like glutaplex, to get the mercury out of your system. And we sort of put that story to bed and everything was great. And I, there was only one thing I never got to doing with you, and that is to give you a quiz on, uh, you know, a questionnaire really on, on what we suspect might be your level of toxicity, and maybe we'll get to that today. The point being, since Tuesday, and today's Friday, three days later, there are six brand new research articles in the news about neurotoxicity, something we were just speaking about, just showing you that pretty much on a daily basis, there is a release somewhere in the world of an article on environmental toxins and different aspects of your physiology, your brain, reproductive system, immunity. And we're going to go over these six new articles with you today. I want to get them all in, at least give you an overview so you can sort of have an appreciation and beware for yourself uh, about the amount of uh, substances in the environment that can be toxic to your brain. And then we'll do this little brain toxicity quiz and see if you have some of these symptoms. First article I want to get to you is from the University of Toronto. Just came out yesterday morning, early in the morning, about packaging uh, of from foods. I'll read this to you, just bits and pieces of it. Chemicals used in the linings of packaging such as fast food wrappers and microwave popcorn bags are leaching into your foods adding to human chemical blood contamination, according to the University of Toronto. Listen to those last four words, human chemical blood contamination. Your blood, you, yeah, you, your blood is being contaminated by wrappers, plastic wrappers, fast food wrappers, microwave popcorn with these chemicals called polyfluoroalkylate phosphate esters. You don't have to know what they're called. Just know that these substances are present in the grease proofing agents that are used in these wrappers and the food. This, the, this, this junk, these polyfluoroalkylate phosphate esters, th these degreasing agents get into contact with your food. And the breakdown products of these chemicals that are used in, in non-stick and water and stain repellent products, things, things in your kitchen pans, clothing, food packaging, and they are found in humans all over the world. That's right, we are all contaminated. This is a major source of human, human exposure. What are the consequences? There are six consequences. Number one, these substances are neurotoxic, exactly what we're speaking around, about right now. They create toxicity in your brain, but they do other things too. They create changes in your sex hormones, they're endocrine disruptors. They create changes, listen to this, in your cholesterol. They elevate cholesterol levels. They de delay development of babies forming inside pregnant moms who are eating food from these wrappers and, and popcorn containers. So they delay development. This substance remains in the blood for years and is carcinogenic. And it's just another example of the over 100,000 chemicals in our environment that are never tested, never spoken about, unless you hear them on this program or one other, two or two of the other programs, you never hear about them at all. Uh, pretty amazing. So that's article number one. These incredible toxic substances, polyfluoroalkylate phosphate esters in grease proofing agents, 
that you come into contact with in your food, in your wrappers, on your clothing, and your kitchen pots and pans is in your body creating, as they put it so beautifully, human chemical blood contamination. Ooh, unbelievable, huh? Listen to the rest of these headlines and we're going to get to them after the break. Pesticides on produce tied to ADHD, a new study in the journal Pediatrics out of the University of Montreal. You got to hear that. Environmental link to Parkinson's disease from the Emory University and the University of Rochester. Formaldehyde linked to Lou Gehrig's disease. Well, how many of us are exposed to formaldehyde? <laughs> Wait and see. Plastic chemical harms brain function. And uh, last but not least, chronic exposure to solvents in your home can disturb the wiring of your brain. Six new articles since Tuesday on neurotoxicity. That's why we harp on it. And that's why NYU released a statement two weeks ago that we have got to detoxify every single day. We're going to get to